The U.S. last week proposed an ambitious plan to make two out of every three new vehicles electric by the next decade. But according to a recent survey conducted by the University of Chicago and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, less than half of Americans are willing to switch to electric cars. For more on this story, we're joined by Mr. Troy Stengron, Senior Director at the Korea Economic Institute. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. First off, the Biden administration's plan to go all eco-friendly when it comes to cars is quite ambitious and also for a good cause. But how can this proposal be made appealing to customers? So over the last year, we've seen EV sales in the United States increase by 65 percent. That's higher than in the rest of the world. So there is some pickup but we're still at about 7% of the market being EV sales as opposed to gas-powered vehicles. But this is where the tax subsidies in the Inflation Reduction Act come into play to try and incentivize Americans to transition to electric vehicles. But at the same time, there's also funding in the infrastructure bill as well previously that was passed last year that would allow for the taking and construction of essentially an EV charging network along the U.S. interstate highway system. And what this would do is it would help to take and alleviate the concerns Americans have about long distance travel and EVs. Because when you look at a lot of polling, one of the things that does come out is a lot of the anxiety tends to be what we call range anxiety. And so if the administration in combination with the purchase tax credits is able to take and build out an EV subsidy network, and they've already talked to Tesla about having it open its network to other EVs as well, then I think we'll start to see some of this change. You'll continue to see more pickup of EVs in the United States. Right. It definitely is eco-friendly and cost-efficient when you when we look at it in the long term. But the figures, the recent figures, are quite daunting for South Korean car makers. South Korean automakers might be up for the challenge, given that, for instance, Hyundai Motor and Kia accounted for only about 4% of electric vehicles that were sold in the U.S. last year. Now, Troy, how can South Korean car makers can take this opportunity? So I think one thing that South Korean car makers have to look to is leasing their vehicles rather than immediate sales. Mm. In the comment period, South Korea, as well as European providers, asked the United States to take and allow for leasing vehicles to not meet or have to meet the assembly requirements in the U.S. And so that means any vehicle that's leased would be eligible for the tax credit. And so while this is not necessarily the standard model that maybe Hyundai and Kia might try to use to sell EVs in the United States, in the short term, this is one path that they can take. At the same time, I think we also need to look at this in the broader context. Um, when we look at the cars that came out uh, today, while they were all American uh, that are eligible for the tax credit, mm -hmm. only 10 vehicles now are eligible for the full tax credit in the United States. And that actually puts Hyundai and Kia in a better position because there's now fewer vehicles that actually can receive the full tax credit. Uh, for example, Tesla, not all of their vehicles are eligible for the full tax credit. And in the grand scheme of things, Tesla still accounts for about 70% of the U.S. EV market. So there are advantages here for Hyundai and Kia if they can switch more to leasing, if they can find cost efficiencies to drive down the cost of their vehicles a little bit to be able to match some of the tax credit differences. I think there's real opportunities. Mm, I see. And also, speaking of vehicles, we cannot not talk about the Inflation Reduction Act. The Washington has announced a list of EV models that a reporter just introduced that will receive subsidies under the law, IRA. Now, South Korea's Hyundai and Kia were both left out. Now, how is this a good or bad news for South Korea? Well, this is what we expected all along. We knew when the act was passed that the first step to receive the tax credit was that it had to be assembled in the United States or Canada or Mexico. And at the moment, Hyundai and Kia don't have an assembly facility capable of producing EVs in either or any of those three countries. And so what that means is, is that immediately they're taken off the table. Now, the good news, as I mentioned, is, is that because there's a second layer of qualifications for the tax subsidies, which deal with the mineral content and the content of components in the batteries, that means none of their competitors are going to necessarily be able to take and produce as many vehicles either that are compliant or to receive the full tax credit. So as I mentioned, Tesla, some of their models only receive half the tax credit. And also Ford, for example, has talked about the production troubles it's having and taking and meeting demand. So you have these supply chain issues that are going to take and slow some of the growth in their competitor side. You have the battery issue, which is going to take and allow Hyundai and Kia to remain more competitive. 
And I think the other thing to keep in mind here is that in the long run, uh, or excuse me, in the long run, South Korea is actually going to benefit greatly from this because the estimates right now are that in a few years, South Korean firms from LG, Samsung, and SK on will bake and basically be most of the batteries in the United States, up to 69% of them. And so while there will be short-term challenges for Hyundai and Kia, for South Korean battery manufacturers, this is going to be a boon. Right, because the batteries are a huge part of the, the EVs obviously being manufactured. Yeah, and they're also, Ford is going to be using South Korean EVs at plants they're building in Tennessee and mm. Kentucky, Honda is as well. So you're seeing a lot of companies reach out to South Korean battery manufacturers. Right, too early to be a letdown. Yeah. All right, thank you, Troy, so much for your insights and connecting with us all the way from D.C. this morning. Thank you.